one of the problem we are facing is that stockings are not ready to spare people for one full year. And how do we address that issue? Something we are kind of looking forward to kind of a feedback, or how do we kind of a make sure that at least a reasonable number of people are able to take the kind of a benefit of the program. Because it's an industry-specific program. If industry doesn't want to come, and then basically possibly the program doesn't need to be there. So that's something we are kind of debating, and hopefully we'll be able to. I'm very positive about it that we'll be able to do something about it. This is today's situation. First uh, part of the workshop, we are trying to pick up these five topics where uh, the participants will uh, give their uh, presentations and look forward to your comments. First one is like the demand for casting. They're just doing the demand for casting. Full course, so they're very excited about it. So they want to highlight those issues. Then pump storage. I guess all of you are aware that one of the important things about this is it's not storage. <coughs> But can we make it story for this? I was going through some of these uh, interesting internet uh, presentations. One of the interesting ones I saw was this guy who was trying to promote electric vehicles and all. And he said that one of the ways electric vehicles do not take off is because the battery cost is huge. But if you take a petrol car, what happens? You pay money over time. So you don't realize that uh, you're paying a full amount of money. But in the battery operated vehicle, you're paying everything up front. So the cost goes up. So effectively, a lot of people don't want to buy electric vehicles. So he was proposing a model that the battery itself will be a variable, that means you can rent a battery. The moment you do that, the electric vehicle cost comes down drastically. And how are you proposing to sustain it? Through this pump story. That this battery, in the night time when they are available, they will be charged, and in the daytime they will be permitted to the grid. That means the power will be available to everybody at a cheaper rate in the daytime, and night time when the power is cheaper, you will store it. So that way your electric vehicle becomes very sustainable. That was the interesting model. And I think it's uh, doing it in Israel and New Zealand and a couple of other countries. Something similar possibly can be thought about and that can make the electric vehicles really take off. Then about need of capacity, I think this is a kind of a very, very broad and uh, very, very serious issue that uh, the capacity building, the HR issues and all needs to be kind of addressed uh, head on. And uh, possibly we are not doing adequate for that. That's one of the reasons this program is kind of very changes. And hopefully we'll be able to say something on those uh, students' health. And the strategy for low carbon, I think mean that's going to be very important too. And India, China, that is so much of the goal. How do we make it kind of cleaner? That's very, very important. And the rural electrification, in Indian context, since uh, almost 70% of the people live in the all, uh, rural area, that effectively, sorry for that, how do we make sure the power is available to them? That's where different alternatives uh, are going to be proposed by the student and whatever they learn, how do you think they will be sustainable or not? That's another issue we will be taking up. And the part two is basically where we look at the four to interactions with uh, all of you on different issues. Bridget is the in charge of that part. She will uh, kind of explain, she has a big idea about these proposals, the big uh, stick on, post on, and all. So that's completely her uh, uh, way of doing it. So I'll that. And thanks a lot for your time and patience for sitting through this presentation. And now I invite uh, you to kind of take up the session for the inaugural part. Thank you for coming.
That is the kind of challenge which we have before us and we require matching transmission matching sub transmission and distribution network and rural electrification network. So a huge challenge they preserve. And we all in the industry have to get up to meet this challenge. If the bombs have been initiated both in generation transmission as well as in distribution sector. And you know we are moving forward but if there are a lot of issues which come up while we are taking this step forward. Before, first and foremost I would say is about capacity addition. What type of you know mix do we want? Uh, hydrothermal mix, whether we want to go in for renewable energy, is it sustainable in India? Uh, we have a national mission uh, on climate change and solar is being considered as one of the renewable energy options where you know it is being mandated that every uh, power utility in the country should at least procure 0.25% of its energy from solar. So you know development in the solar field is taking place in India but at the moment the cost is very high. It has come down from say 18-19 crore per megawatt down to 14-15. But if we are to go for a uh, requirement of 20,000 megawatt in up to 2020, then a lot of development needs to be done in the solar field. So that we uh, contribute our mind to the world environment. Uh, secondly is the other uh, renewable energy options which we are considering for meeting our uh, commitments towards the world environment. So we are considering wind, biomass, and in Delhi we have set up some biomass plants from solid waste plants in Timarpur and Okla, but they are also uh, you know, being stopped by the activists in Delhi. So let's see what happens to them. But the main issue I think in uh, renewables is the integration with the grid. You know, integrating <coughs> with intermittent power into the grid is one of the issues. And in Delhi what we are finding is <coughs> that, you know, Delhi itself does not have much of renewable energy options. So whether we should go in for RECs <coughs> or should we have solar options in our own uh, state, install solar energy in Delhi, that is what we are considering because you know RECs, if we mandate RECs, there may come a time when you know even states like Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Rajasthan, they might not like to be supplying renewable energy to us because when the RECs are being bought by every state, then a lot of intermittent power will be uh, injected into the states which have renewable energy sources. Renewable energy sources are quite diffused in states where we have them in Rajasthan, we have them in Gujarat, we have them in Andhra or in coastal regions. So you know their power systems might have a problem in grid stability. <coughs> we are trying to see what sort of energy options should we have for renewables and what sort of uh, energy mix should we have. The second issue which I would say is uh, you know, uh, for all uh, competition in the generation sector would be operationalization of open access. You know, that though open access is being touted as one of the, uh, you know, uh, good uh, benefits which has come out of the Electricity Act 2003. But in actual practice, it's operationalization at <coughs> levels up to 1 megawatt and then below is becoming very difficult. In Delhi, we have not been able to operationalize open access at the moment, but we are trying very hard now in DERC to try and help consumers with operationalize open access in Delhi. The third issue which I would say is facing our power sector is reduction of aggregate technical and commercial losses, which uh, is being faced by all the utilities in the country. And uh, how do we, uh, you know, reduce these losses? Uh, one is the political will. Second is reduction of these losses through technical means. We have been advocating that these losses can be reduced through intervention, interventions on the technological front. Also, commercial losses can also be reduced by technological interventions, which we can go into in detail later on. Then, uh, you know, 
improvement in quality and reliability of power supply has become very important at this point of time. When we are, uh, you know, using a lot of computer-based systems, electronics, everything has now become electronic, and a lot of harmonics are being injected into the system. So another issue which is now very important is improvement in the quality as well as reliability of power supply in the country. So that would be one issue which I would like to flag. And uh, rural electrification is another issue. About 15% of our villages are still unelectrified. Lot of it, the work is being done by the, the government of India through the RDG by program. And uh, it is hoped that in a couple of years we'll be able to achieve electrification of the rural areas. But supplying power to the electrification alone is not enough. We should be able to give power to the rural areas. What is going to happen is that we do not have our backup power and system to supply to these rural areas. We may electrify them on paper, but the real issue is supplying power to these areas. I would feel that is another area into which we need to look into. The smart grid is what Vijay is also looking into and it is one of the, you know, the keywords of the industry today. So I don't think I need to speak on smart grid, but it is one of the issues. I would say smart grid at operationalization at the distribution level is what we would uh, be looking into and demand response from smart grid <coughs> we are looking at in Delhi. Because we do not want to do smart grid in isolation, but you know, achieve a demand response. So because the peak and off peak uh, requirements in Delhi are quite substantial, so you know, we are not, not thinking of installing smart grid in isolation. Rather in Delhi we are approaching the problem thinking of smart grid along with demand response. We have had a few presentations on this and maybe in the near future we'll be able to implement it. Uh, we are also looking at other DSM options in Delhi, like such a plan we are not really able to do with, along with your own energy efficiency very soon. And the DSM options otherwise also are very important because you know Delhi is facing, in, like I talked about, in open access that people are coming for buying power at off peak times. You know, Delhi doesn't have a COD pricing uh, at this point of time. So people would like to buy power in peak time from the utility and would like to go on open access in the off-peak time. When the utility itself is finding very difficult to sell power which it has procured because utility has procured long-term power from the various sources round the clock. And you know people want to go on open access in the off-peak or night time. So there they can buy power at 1 rupee or 2 rupees from outside and the utility having a uniform pricing of 4 rupees. It, if the customers go out at off-peak time, then the issue is what does the, the utility do with that power? So that is one of the issues I would like all of you to consider by thinking of open access that most of the customers try to go for open access at off-peak time rather than <coughs> that is what we are experiencing in Delhi. So one of the solutions is that we should go for time of day trick, but since this is not implemented as yet, we are thinking of how to go about this issue. Uh, then I would say one of the issues in power sector is standardization of equipment and materials and specifications, and as well as the construction practices. You know, a lot is being done at the government level also. We have issues with you know, construction standards at CA level, but there is a lot to be done in standardization of specifications. And I would feel that if we standardize these specifications, especially for distribution equipment, then this will go a long way in helping our past industry. Otherwise, it takes a long time for procurement of equipment, especially in the government sector with L1 tendering. And uh, I would say demand forecasting at all, you'll be hearing a lot, so I would not like to say anything the last issue I would like to talk about is capacity building in the power sector. Since I have looked up the HR, I know that the requirements of power sector in the 11th plan which we worked out is 10 lakh personnel for 11th plan and an additional 6.6 .6 lakh personnel in the 
12 lakhs. And similarly, it's, it's about 5 lakhs would follow in 13 lakhs. So we need to train our people for the work in power sector. We found that, you know, skilled technicians were very much, you know, not available. So government of India started and adopted ITI scheme for, you know, generating skilled tech technicians. They are seated as the project developers to uh, adopt an ITI in the vicinity so that, you know, we have the kind of skills we require from the ITI. There are innumerable ITIs in the country but they do not generate the skills which we require for power sector. So, you know, government of India has initiated this at the technician level and supervisor level. But even at the engineer level, a lot of engineering colleges in India. There is no dearth of engineering colleges in India. But what we require is people who know about the power sector. You know, they are useful in the power sector. So we have at the Federal Electricity Authority level, we are accrediting institutes for training people in the power sector. There is a accreditation scheme in place, but that is mostly for hydro and thermal institutes and uh, transmission institutes. There are very few institutes available at the distribution level. Uh, the real level where, you know, people interact with the customers and where we supply electricity. You know, distribution is the link, which is the large, most heavy part of the uh, power sector. So we are trying to look at people who can come in the distribution industry and I think that is where NCI can help a lot in generating the required human resource potential for training people in the power sector. That is the uh, place where we require, you know, training institutes like NCI. New technologies are coming up, smart grids, open access, you know, everything is uh, we want to be state of the art in our country in the past sector. So that is where institutes like MBI can put their foot forward. And like he says, it is very difficult to spare people who all who are available in the past sector. So you should think of something like a half day course. <laughs> you know, because nobody can be spared from their offices for long. Even if you know coming here after has become like uh, very difficult for us. <laughs>
So I will not waste too much time. I think we are running out of time. We will try to be more efficient. Uh, so can I invite the first presenter uh, to present the first uh, presentation on demand forecasting, benefits of demand forecasting for the public. I would like to request you to introduce yourself with the team, if you have a team, and then Good morning, I'm Director. Thank 
nonlinear and linear series evaluation. So uh, we have uh, used the Arma technique. We have we have taken a set of data, which is a monthly uh, data of the northern region demand of electricity from the period of 2008 till December 2010. And we have utilized the various techniques and came up with the conclusion that the minimum error that came up was with the Arma technique. So we have used this technique and the software tool we have used is EDUs to figure out the forecasting software. Graph you can see how the data from the trail to the data. So, uh, having created a model for this using the Alima technique, we have found that the mean absolute percentage error is less than 1 per time, that is 0.36 for each sample data. If this is used for out of sample, that may be certain things for the percentage error. But what we find is that the model is quite appropriate. Uh, with uh, a error of one percent, we can do certain analysis in the future. Here in the next graph we see, we have tried to superimpose the actual and the forecasted data to figure out whether we are, <coughs> we are moving in the right direction. We find that the green one is the predicted or the forecasted data for any sample and actual is the red one. We find that this is a pretty super imposing, uh, pretty, pretty good relationship between the actual and the forecasted figures. So, uh, having done all this, we started moving on to our sample. We had the data up till December 2010. Now, we started moving on for four months ahead of the sample, that is out of sample. Although we have the data, we have kept it aside. What is ignorant of the values of actual figures. But we have these figures, actual figures, which the model is unaware. And uh, we find that out of sample forecasting has further improved the percentage error. Uh, previous figure was 0.3, now we have got a percentage error of 0.1. So uh, having got the results out of sample forecasting, we find that in uh, January 2011, we got a predicts that the demand for electricity will be to the tune of 19,500. Uh, the actual figure says it's 20,400. Further inputs as you move over February, further inputs as you move over to March. In March you can see the model has predicted, forecasted the demand of electricity for northern region to be to the tune of uh, 20,400. And uh, uh, the actual figure says this 20,400. Pretty, pretty close. Right? So, uh, special acknowledgments to our professors who have uh, uh, spent a lot of time in uh, making us aware about this. So, uh, we have almost come, on to come to the end of our presentation on demand forecasting. Now, uh, our group feels we uh, have certain confused, confused, confused remarks in this. Uh, we feel that CERC being the apex body in uh, electricity sector, they can play a pivotal role in the demand forecasting or in, 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 in creating an environment, creating a platform which will facilitate forecasting for the organizations that uh, uh, electricity boards or utilities generators. And uh, uh, electricity, uh, as we have seen in the Chautauqua Day Committee report, Chautauqua Day Committee report, that uh, improper data management is one of the uh, lacking lacunas of this report. So, that data management can be improved or is being actually improved by the listed reports and uh, in the other distribution utilities. So, this is uh, a the data management having been done uh, with the now they are actually geared up to take up the forecasting tools that you can say to proper forecasting or proper estimation of the demand of electricity that is about to come. Similarly, during our recent visits to one of the energy exchanges, we have come to know that the amount of electricity we trade is one percent of what is what is being traded on national level. So uh, if 
sector, we are intending to move toward the regulated economy, we are intending to move uh, towards market efficiency and such scenarios, the role of energy exchange becomes valuable. And uh, energy exchanges are based <coughs> on uh, who can incorporate these forecasting techniques <coughs> better assess the situation of the market. And that is your thank you very much.
So now some of the environmental concerns which have been identified during the installation process or during this uh, visibility analysis or during this proceeding of the uh, hydropower, uh, the pond storage system are the surface water and the ground water. The fauna and flora which is, which is uh, said to be hampered by taking up large areas for this for terrestrial and aquatic plants. Visuals of aesthetics have said to be hampered. The noise acoustics that created due to this uh, falling water and the human running are also one of the problems. The cultural sites. So uh, some of the mitigation measures are uh, listed by them are the dam outflow management soil conservation, the relocation of uh, relocation of species, positioning of dam output, education, training and rearrangement. This uh, the replacement and rehabilitation issue has been found in one of the latest account stories is actually being undertaken is when land of people are being relocated. So uh, the mitigation measure for this account uh, storage scheme is that a home storage scheme, as we have come to know that the, under, uh, the downstream resorber, resorber can make use of an abandoned mine, <coughs> abandoned mine, and uh, so uh, or can make use of a sea as a downstream resorber. So the issues are to some extent mitigated if, if we go for a conventional hydropower plant compared to the home storage. Home storage does not make the utilization of a of, of, uh, uh, that much area which a conventional hydropower requires. So